Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Resident Evil clone in Unity and welcome to episode 9. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at some UI, so we're going to have a fade screen, we're going to add in a little bit of sound and we're also going to focus a tiny bit on environmental design. And don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else about game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, where do we start? We've got a multitude of things to cover in this tutorial. I don't want to drag on for too long. First thing I want to touch upon is just some ambience that, you know, just so as it's not silent when we play. Uh, I would have liked to have dealt with some footstep sounds, but I think uh, people really want to get into the visuals more than anything at the moment until we get to the nitty gritty little bits. So that's what we're going to focus on um, in the next couple of tutorials. So for now, uh, let's quickly create a new folder and let's call this audio. And in this folder, let's create a new folder and let's just call this, um, let's call it effects. Uh, let's create another folder and call this one music. So that effects folder will remain empty for now, but when we get content, that's where it will go for that. So in the music, even though this isn't technically music, it's still going to be effectively a sound. So I'm going to drag and drop that wind sound into that folder. You can get this if you head to the website, go to downloads and assets, go to the Resident Evil clone, and then to tutorial number nine, and you can download it for free. So in order to get this to play, we need to attach this to a relative object in the scene. So I'm going to go to game object, create empty, and I'm going to rename this to overworld uh, AMB. AMB is just short for ambience. And all we need to do is just drag and drop that sound over here on the inspector panel, and it will create a component right there. Uh, we don't really need 3D sound settings per se. However, you can uh, make spatial sounds if you want to, but for now, all we need is just a general sound. Uh, make sure we have play on awake ticked. Make sure we have loop ticked, just so as it kind of cycles through. Uh, I know this sound is going to be quite loud. You can t probably tell by the way it looks there. So I'm going to reduce the volume to maybe 0.1. And I'm going to reduce the pitch as well to about 0.8. So obviously the lower the pitch, the deeper it will sound. The higher the pitch, the higher it will sound in, you know, it'll sound quite, quite squeaky. <laughs> so let's press play and let's see how this sounds in our ears now. So even now it's still quite loud. So we can control this a little bit more. Let's see what it sounds like if we have the volume as 0.01. I just want a little bit of sound, that's all I need right now. Yep, so I'm happy with that. Next, what we're going to do is let's take a look at some environmental design. So at the moment, we just have a kind of L-shaped room. It's a bit boring. This is where the asset store comes into play. The asset store is a fantastic place that you can get assets for pretty much any type of game. And there is so much that you can get there for free as well. So if you hold control and press nine, you will end up on the asset store. You'll just need to log in if you're not already logged in. Uh, I think the asset store has changed over the years and it does look a little bit different than when I first started using Unity. But the general principle of how to use it is you can just type in what you're looking for at the top and search. So let's search for something like, let's search for chairs first of all. So let's just search for chairs you'll be presented with tons of results. Uh, but if you go to pricing on the right hand side and click free, if you only want to get free assets, because on this channel, we only deal with free. Uh, I've chosen this one in particular, just because I like the design, particularly of the chair on the left. I just think that'll fit in with us a little bit more. You'll just need to click uh, import and down, or rather download and import here to bring it into your project file. Uh, another one I've searched for is some barrels. So if you search for barrels, let's go to free as always. And there's a couple of different assets that you could use. Again, I have downloaded a couple. Uh, I think I've downloaded this one uh, just because it gives us some crates, a little bit of extra content in the pack as well. So again, 
you would just download an import. It'll bring it into your uh, actual project. So once you've got the assets you're happy with, I have placed them inside this packs folder here. And we can see we have a couple of different asset packs. And if you go into them and look for the prefabs, you'll be able to find objects that you can insert into your scene. So it's a case of maybe changing the size. So if I change this to three by three by three, uh, I'm going to add a component and I'm going to go to physics and add a box collider simply because we don't want to be able to pass through that object at any point. You might need to increase the size and center of that particular uh, collider as well. So it kind of fits the object a little bit more. So it stops our player walking through. Uh, let's just add a couple more things. Let's make this five by five by five, maybe. Let's add another collider. Now, the reason I use box colliders is because they are, in the simplest terms, they're the easiest thing to use. The more sides that your object has with the more colliders on it will cause more of a problem, or not problem, kind of more memory intensive. If you have an object with a million sides to it, and a million sides of a collider, that's going to take up power. So you can see all I've done here is I am just bringing these uh, assets in and I'm just attaching colliders to each and every one of them. What I would recommend you do at this point is take your time to build up the entire scene how you want it to be. Explore what you can find in the asset store. It's kind of just explore everything. You don't need to, you know, take the rubbish cheap assets. Look for something that you think is acceptable, something decent. Now, do you remember what I said about colliders? You can see here that all this green surrounding this chair, this is all a collider. So if we go here, we can see this is down as a mesh collider. And for this instance, yes, it's going to be okay. But if this chair contained many, many more sides, it could prove a bit of a problem. So I'm going to take this, hold control, press D, duplicate it. Let's have a few chairs along here. Let's also have a chair that has maybe uh, fallen over, I guess. Uh, probably not that way. That'd be a silly way for it to fall. Maybe that way on its side. So it's just kind of fallen like that, I guess. Uh, and the other asset pack that I had was this one with a couple of different barrels in. Uh, let's just add these. Increase the size. Five, five, five. That's a big barrel, that one. Uh, again, this one already has the collider attached to it. You can always tell when colliders attach because they have these green lines surrounding the object that you're dealing with. Uh, let's have one more barrel here. Let's have this one as four, four, four. So we start to bring in some actual useful things to our scene. Uh, again, I really would recommend you take the time now to build up how you want your scene to look. Try and bring in some atmosphere. Uh, the last thing I'm quickly going to touch upon is how we can further customize these actual objects in the scene. So for example, if we take this barrel and if we go to the LOD zero, which it, that uh, stands for level of detail, I should add, which we will get into at some point later in the series, but for now, it's fine as it is. You could go to the material and you can actually play around with the material itself. Now, looking at it, it looks okay, but what if we were to take the normal map here, click on it, create from grayscale, and then click apply it would give it a rougher texture. And I like this texture a little bit more than the original texture it dealt with. So I am gonna take all of them and I'm gonna turn them into grayscale. And then I'm gonna modify a little bit again later on. But I just think using normal maps correctly is always a good way to give your environment a little bit more detail. So I'm going to do that with all of these normal maps right here, change them to grayscale, Click apply, and there we go. So it looks a little bit more gritty. Uh, I'll leave the chairs as they are, I think, for now. Uh, this barrel in particular I want to go back to, and let's say we want to really make the normal map quite intense. You could always just drag it up there, and you can see just how intense that barrel has become. Again, 
it's it's something that you can deal with. It's you know this is your game at the end of the day. Play around with the settings, see what settings work for you, and yeah, just come up with your own design. Uh, okay, so I'm going to press play and let's see how this looks now. Okay, so yep, we can't walk through there. We won't be able to walk through this barrel. In fact, we won't be able to walk through anything, as you can see. So the only thing you might need to do is refine the colliders around some of these objects just a little bit more, just so as, you know, it, it doesn't collide too far away. So, so far, so good. Uh, I'm going to bring come back to this uh, in a couple of minutes when we've dealt with the next part of the tutorial because these are going to be important in the next part in the next tutorial anyway. Um, what I would also recommend doing as well is tidying up your hierarchy again because we've got more uh, objects in here. Just make sure we keep it nice and clean. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys to do that. I'll probably do it off camera. So a fading screen. So we need the camera to kind of fade in. So from black to a full scene view. It's a lot easier than what you think. It's not going to take that long to do. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. This will create something called a canvas and an event system. We don't need to worry about the event system just for now. The canvas, if we double click it, you can see all the way around is a white line. This white line represents your screen. So everything that is inside this game window will be inside this canvas right here. So anything UI based goes inside the canvas. In this case, the raw image is right here. Over here, we have a rec transform. And this thing here is called an anchor. Now we can anchor this to any particular side of the scene or rather the canvas in the scene. However, we can use stretch. And that stretch will allow this object to stretch across the entirety of the canvas or the screen with no hassle whatsoever. So we can theoretically use that to give ourselves a fading screen. So to do that, make sure we have this set as stretch. To stretch it across the entirety of that canvas, we now need to zero out every number up here. So zero, zero, zero zero and if we were to press play you'd see that well all you'd see is white easy so let's use that to our advantage now let's change that to black and you'll notice as we've changed it to black we can change something called the alpha down here and if we move this slider you'll see how it's fading nice and easily the lower the alpha becomes so if we start at 255 alpha and create an animation to go to zero alpha, then we've just created a fade screen, right? Well, why don't we do that? So let's go back to our assets folder. Let's right click, create folder, and let's have this as animations. And in animations, let's create a new folder called UI. So any UI animations that we create will be inside this UI folder. Now, let's take that raw image, right click, rename, and let's call it fade in. So we have fade in and fade out. Fading in is when we go from black to the game view. Fading out is when we go from the game view to the black. And obviously we'll use that when we go through a door. So we can kind of use this to our advantage and recycle the idea. So on fade in, go to your animation tab. And if you don't have that animation tab there, you can click this little menu icon down here go to add tab and then click on animation. Now let's click on create and let's call this fade in. And then we just need to press the record button. And this little number here is known as the keyframe. And this number here samples is actually the frames per second. I always deal with 60 frames per second because I think it gives me a lot more versatility in what I'm doing with the animation. First thing we have to do at frame zero, which is the initial standard keyframe, is set whatever the animation state should be before it animates. In this case, we want it to be completely black. Now, although we do have it completely black, we just need to set that animation frame. So just retype 255 in your alpha 
down there. And you'll notice these two dots appear. That means the keyframe has been set. So we want to fade in over, let's say, um, I don't know, a second and a half, so 90 frames. So let's go to the 90th frame, hit return, and change the alpha on the color to zero. And then hit the X, and then press the record button to complete the animation. So you'll notice if you slide along, you'll see that frame down here is zero on the alpha. So now head back to the project view, click on that animation you've just created and make sure you untick loop time. What that means is if we have loop time ticked, it will repeat the animation over and over and over infinitely. If we untick it, it will play just the once. So fade in is there, fade in is active. And if we press play now, we should see go from black to the game view. There we go. Perfect. Let's try that one more time. Excellent. So it's up to you how you want to deal with that animation. If you want to perhaps maybe shorten it to just a second, you would go to the game object, go to the animation tab, press record again, and you could just drag these uh, dots down to wherever you would want them to be. So let's say we're back on that second now. So we've shortened the animation by half a second. Let's go back to our project window and press play. And the animation will play quicker. There we go. Excellent. So uh, next tutorial, guys, I want to focus on graphic quality. So we're going to do something called post-processing. And from there, when we've got the graphics down to how we would like them to be, that's when we're going to move on to more cool, intricate and wonderful things within the series. So I'm just going to go zoom into our soldier. And remember earlier I said I'm going to come back to some of this um, at the end of this tutorial. When we apply the uh, post-processing to make our graphic quality better, all of these will look even better than what they do now. So that's going to be really fun to do. I always enjoy doing things like post-processing because it gives you an opportunity to create loads of different effects for your game. So until that next tutorial, guys, you make sure you build up all of your environment here, get the right objects in. I'll probably add a couple of more, move a few things around just to make it look a little bit better for that next tutorial. Until then, guys. Thank you very much for watching.